Cal goes on the road and beats Auburn. And you know what? I'll say it. They controlled the game. The entire, entire game. game. The yeah. entire game. There was I had no faith that Auburn was going to come back and win that football game. You texted me in the middle of it. There it is. You said Teddy Buchanan is awesome. And I'm like, you're right. You know who else is awesome? Ryan McCullough. Marcus Harris. Miles Williams. I, I thought they played a fantastic front to back defensive game of football and put Hugh Freeze in an absolute blender. They pounded Auburn. All right. Auburn looked terrible. Peyton Thorne was awful. Cam Coleman looked okay. All right. But look. He got banged up a little bit too. Got banged up a little bit. Just. I'm concerned about this Auburn team moving forward. But more than that, and you were on him first, this California team might not. It might be a team that threatens some teams in the ACC. And uh, when I evaluate uh, the rest of their schedule, I'm looking at games like Miami that you get at home, where Miami has to travel across the country, by the way, to play you. Right? I'm looking at Florida State, all of a sudden looks like a very winnable game. NC State, you get at home, looks like a really winnable game. Stanford, Syracuse, SMU, Oregon State, Wake Forest, Pitt. There are so many winnable games on this schedule for Cal. And guess what? If Mendoza goes down, we don't care because Chandler Rogers is there as well. Like the ceiling, I think, of this Cal team, okay, just shot way up. And we saw when they played good defense, right? And we've seen them score on offense before, right? You you do lose Jake Spavital, uh, or you don't have Jake Spavital, obviously, anymore. Call it, was he the offensive coordinator there last year? I might be just spitting rando stuff, but uh, let me just pull this up real quick. Yeah, he was their OC last year, and he was really good. Now he's the OC at Baylor. I'm maybe not sold on what they can do offensively yet with Fernando Mendoza, but I thought they did enough. You know? Dude, Ott, Ott had 10 rushes for 11 yards. And they I mean, dominated the game. They did. They really did. JV and Thomas looked really good. Mendoza was throwing to a bunch of backup receivers. And they played <laughs> out of their mind. Hunter, Brady, Star. I mean, we're talking about, you know, guys that are, you know, your third, fourth, fifth receivers. And this is also, or I guess target weapons, targets, but this is also a team when Aub we talked about, like they lost a lot in that secondary last year. They did. And and you kind of saw those guys kind of get picked after. But the real concerning issue for Auburn is, I mean, we talked about this in the preview. It was like, can Cal stop the run? And they did enough. They did enough to make Auburn throw. I mean, Hunter averaged almost six yards a carry, but they averaged, they did enough to where when Peyton Thorne had to drop back, bad things happened for Auburn. Four interceptions. What I'm counting like three sacks, a lot more missed wrecking havoc there and i think you recovered a fumble too but i think that was hunter that, that they oh yeah they knocked out you know the hunter but regardless though it was it was awesome justin wilcox special and we've talked about cal you know maybe struggling offense defensively more than they should have under wilcox because he's a defensive guy and he looked good man he was so happy on the side you could see and they went into auburn and they won, man. And Mendoza, and the announcers were loving Mendoza, rightfully so. He threw some beautiful balls. He was in complete command, scrambling on the run. He was throwing darts to guys, and they were making plays. And Buchanan, man, I can't say enough. You, you, we talked about that. He, he was everywhere. Was Him and Olave. Real. Noah Williams as well. They, yeah, they, they kind of took over there, and it was awesome. And you mentioned that schedule for Cal. I'll switch it to Auburn here in terms of, you know, Arkansas all of a sudden. Listen, I mean, they're going to be desperate, I think, back against the wall. Who knows what can happen there? And then your stretch there in October is not easy at all. I know Oklahoma didn't look good today, 
but they're still a talented football team. I know Kentucky didn't look good yesterday. They're a talented football team. Obviously, Georgia and Missouri on the road are not ideal. And so this is an Auburn team that wanted to win eight football games, and this was one of them that they wanted to win. And it, it just didn't happen. I feel really good about my cow, you know, over six and a half. Could have gotten at six. Feel, still feel good about six and a half. And especially with this win, the way they're playing. Now, obviously, we've seen this before when their teams struggled down the stretch to cover. Auburn did that last year where they should have, you know, hit their over for me last year. But then, regardless, though, you, you got to love it. I think if Cal... If they didn't have to travel across country, man, and they did, by the way, and they looked good, but we'll see how that attrition gets to them because I, I we just don't know. I don't know how you quantify it. I, I really don't, and nobody does. Nobody, nobody knows how to do it, so we'll see. But again, you still have to feel really good for Cal, and this is a Cal football team that's it's been dying, been dying. And and you mentioned Chandler Rogers too. He came back. And look good on the ground there too. And obviously, they feel really good about both those guys. I, I tweeted out, Cal's got two quarterbacks better than Auburn's. And and Chandler Rogers was a guy I was like, why wasn't Auburn after? Because he can run the ball like Peyton Thorne can, but he's a better throw of the football, I think. You know, there's a lot of other quarterbacks you're seeing out there. But, you know, is it on Thorne or is it on the offensive line that's still gelling together? Is it on Hugh Freeze? Is it the receivers aren't as good as we thought they were? A, a lot of things can be wrong, but... Again, man, it's not Peyton Torn. He's not the guy. We we know he's not the guy. I'm gonna say this so I can clip this later. But looking at the schedule and the remaining, this is week two. Now this is I'm not trying to overreact here, but just looking at the schedule, like there is a world where this Cal team can make the college football playoffs, which is hilarious. It really is. It's awesome. Yeah, but uh, because of the way the 12 team is structured and like. That Miami team, if you somehow get them to travel across the country and you and I don't expect them to win that football game. I don't. You find a way to win that football game. It is going to get crazy over there in California. Hey, last thing last thing on Auburn. Is it crazy to say that like in every every SEC game they're going to have, and maybe even that New Mexico game, <laughs> by the way, they're going to have the worst quarterback in that matchup. I mean, we're talking about, you know, Devin, Devin Dampy, our New Mexico, who's first key, right? But and more seriously, Taylor Green at Arkansas. We're talking about Brock Vandegrift at Kentucky, who didn't look good, but I know that. Diego Pavia at Vanderbilt. I mean, how many of those guys are better than Peyton Thorne? I, I think General at least Booty. a couple, if not all of them. <laughs> General Booty, who's balling out right now for ULM. But, that, I mean, I, I know... That was a, a huge topic. and, well, and TBD on Brock Vandegrift. But again, I, I think we've seen enough of Peyton Thorne to be like, okay, he is who he is, right? He's terrible. Brock Vandegrift, I think that D-line, and we'll talk about it, but that D-line was crazy, regardless.